Okay. Okay. Second second uh, session here, craft session. <laughs> yes. So what did we say? We did, we looked at lambda, and we were looking at these two aspects, synchronous and asynchronous. And now we're looking at synchronous, building internet applications and providing APIs to uh, support these. Yeah. So. In the previous episode, we made this distinction synchronous and asynchronous. Now let's look at how do we call Lambda in request response manner. So what is needed for mobile and web applications. Mm -hmm. We mentioned three services that are usually used for that. API Gateway, Applicational Balancer and AppSync. So all three have direct integration with, with Lambda. Distinction between these services, uh, so we made here that if you are working with REST API architectural style, mm -hmm. then you should be looking at API Gateway and uh, Application Load Balancer. But if you're using GraphQL, then AppSync is a service for you. And GraphQL is obviously not as widely used as uh, REST API. I think everybody more or less knows REST APIs and very few kind of really used GraphQL in production or development. So it's really a discussion yeah. if, if you want to go down that, that route or if you're staying with REST. So, so what is the main difference? I think, uh, I mean, GraphQL is only about three, four, four years old when Facebook uh, open sourced it in 2018 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, GraphQL is definitely more powerful than REST API. And why? Because from, the, from your client devices, let's say mobile app, you can make just a one network call and in the GraphQL request, uh, be it a query or mutation, there will be a set of calls that are made to the backend to collect the data. Mm -hmm. So basically in one request over the network, you get data from different sources on your backend. Mm -hmm. For the same thing in the REST API, you would have to make several calls between client and uh, server. So why is that? Uh, a uh, big difference uh, if the client device is uh, yes if the client device is a mobile phone uh, what kind of internet connection it has uh, how much battery it is being uh, used so one network request is much better than 15 uh, yeah. requests and also for the server side obviously for a facebook running the lambdas let's say whatever they run mm -hmm. if you need to let's say pick out data across 10 different resources you can call 10 times or you can call one time and if you have like 2 billion users it's you a have a big big difference exactly but as you said graphql um, requires um, a bit of understanding on both front end develop developers and also back end developers how to write resolvers in lambda mm -hmm. uh, so i would say the uh, decision which way to go usually will be on the skills of your development team now, if we look at the REST API, these two services are mostly used and quite often the question is, what is the difference? I mean, if both can be used, what is, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. uh, and the difference is a subtle difference, but very important. Yes. Uh, I would say uh, API Gateway and Application Load Balancer probably support everything that you need. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need WebSockets? Both support. Also, AppSync uh, supports over subscriptions. Uh, do you need uh, integration with Cognito for authentication? Both support. Mm -hmm. Custom domain. Custom domains, web application firewall, shields, they all support. Mm -hmm. uh, routing based on path, mm -hmm. both, both support. Mm -hmm. Combination with HTTP methods uh, that are uh, in the REST call, so put, get, mm -hmm. post, uh, and delete both support so there is not much difference here yeah. the biggest difference is in the uh, responses per second so api gateway is limited is limited mm -hmm. on um, 10,000 responses uh, or 10,000 requests per second mm -hmm. it can burst to 15,000 but that's as maximum as it goes whereas alb has no limitation it can go to million requests per second, it is built for high scale. Mm -hmm. So if you have an application that requires a lot of requests going to AWS and ending up in Lambda, mm -hmm. ALB is the way to go. Yeah, and probably there also there's some um, topic around costs, I guess, like 
building the same uh, application, let's say you're still within the 10,000, let's say, mm -hmm. probably, um, well, depending on, on which one you choose, there there is some consideration on cost. I don't remember by so, heart there. But. Uh, you're right, API Gateway for a long time has been more expensive than mm -hmm. ALB. Uh, recently, API Gateway got uh, uh, a light version yeah, of it HTTP. called, called yeah. HTTP API. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate naming, but uh, it's uh, another version of API yes. Gateway that is much more limited in functionality than the Big Brother API Gateway, but it's much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, by default you should choose uh, for most of the applications HTTP API uh, Gateway. Mm -hmm. and one thing I can also mention just uh, if somebody likes to work with um, uh, uh, defining and declaring APIs through something like Swagger. Mm -hmm. This is something you can just upload to API Gateway. I've been using that a few times. It really depends if you like it or not. There are a few gotchas and so on. Uh, I mean, to, to be fair, API Gateway is designed to work with APIs, right? Yeah. Where ALB is a load balancer at the exactly. end that is uh, throwing re uh, requests in a round robin fashion to whatever is in behind. Just because it has integration with Lambda, mm -hmm. Uh, it made it a bit more appealing in com competing with API Gateway, mm -hmm. but API Gateway is really your way, way to go. And the second difference is what these services integrate with in the background. We mentioned Lambda here, but API Gateway is really a beast. It integrates with anything that has HTTP endpoint, yeah. basically every AWS service mm -hmm. you can expose through mm -hmm. API Gateway. And you can mock stuff as well. Exactly, yeah. yes. And ALB has only few integrations, mm -hmm. so it integrates with Lambda, mm -hmm. integrates with uh, ECS and EKS uh, uh, orchestration services EC2. for containers, EC2. EC2, and anything that has IP address. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as it goes. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would say load balancer should really be used for um, let's say uh, uh, services in the back in the, in the back end that are more container-based or EC2-based, whereas API Gateway, I would go for more Lambda, Lambda-based uh, backend. Mm -hmm. And to be fair to AppSync, it's not Lambda only thing that it integrates with. It has resolvers built in also for uh, DynamoDB or for Elasticsearch, mm -hmm. uh, but um, you need to use um, uh, that uh, Velocity Template Library, uh, with, uh, which is a little bit cumbersome but um, uh, Lambda resolvers now are um, solving that you don't need to use VTL uh, library anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I think also like just one comment from, on AppSync here, that's the, the, the newest of, of, of the three here, right, in a, in a perspective. This is the oldest, I think. Or let's say we have a classic yeah. classic load balancer that's that split into yes. two, and then yeah. so the concept is kind of, it's the oldest, and then API Gateway, and then AppSync, and on AppSync, I mean, if we're comparing a little bit clouds as well, and we're, let's look at Google, and Google bought Firebase, and Firebase is very, very much geared towards development of especially mm -hmm. mobile applications, but let's say applications in general, they have a very, very broad and nice suite to, to build just these applications. And I think AppSync, Pinpoint, and a few others of these technologies are also kind of aspiring to become something similar, let's say, yeah. for, for these things. And, and there we also have this, uh, serverless model, we have SAM and all these other things that kind of... Um, yeah, they integrate. They, they are, of course, integrated with everything, but it's, it's more like, I've, I've seen like, especially when you look at Pinpoint and, and um, working with uh, mobile applications, it's quite often this is also uh, popping up there. Yeah, yeah and AppSync is very good um, for, for the web sockets, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, of of all, it uh, works the easiest uh, uh, through the subscriptions. Mm -hmm. Also, based on my experience with one project that we worked on, uh, it is the, the fastest one. So, mm -hmm. API Gateway introduces latency uh, up to 14 seconds for um, uh, web sockets. That's uh, based on uh, our project that we did, whereas AppSync was much, much faster. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Cool. So, uh, five minutes crafts uh, turned to be 10 minutes crafts, but... Uh, <laughs> you get double. <laughs> price of one. <laughs> yes. See you in the next yeah. episode. Thanks. Bye-bye.